Hi, welcome to Data Engineering. So today we are going to discuss about what is Hive, the introduction of Hive and then the architecture of Hive. And before getting into this video, I have uploaded so many videos for Hadoop, Spark and Hive and so many things. I have given all the playlist links as a category in my description box. Please, if you want to go through um, more of my videos, please uh, check those URLs. Okay, let's get into the topic. So Hive, so before getting into Hive, like we need to see few more things. We will just start with that. So with respect to Hadoop, uh, we have two components, right? When we say Hadoop, it's combination of HDFS and MapReduce. So that's that's what Hadoop is, right? So HDFS is a place where your data will be get distributed and MapReduce is a place where you write jobs, the transformation jobs, and then uh, using Java and then MapReduce will do a distributed processing of your code by reading the data from HDFS. Okay, so now imagine you have to write a join query. So in MapReduce, you can't write any SQLs. You need to write a Java code. Imagine you are migrating your logics from some other uh, RDBMS database. Uh, there is a join query you have to do, which people have been doing in an Oracle. Now you have to do the same in MapReduce. So then you have to write a Java code, like 10 to uh, 15 lines of code you have to write to achieve that single line SQL join query here. Now here comes the problem. So the SQL developer says like, we are into Hadoop because MapReduce is really good. It is doing parallel processing and it is distributed parallel processing and the performance is really good. We like all those concepts, but the only problem for is, uh, it's, it's, it's always Java. So we need a SQL layer. It will be good instead of Java if we have SQL to communicate with MapReduce. And that's where this Hive entered into picture. So if you see, HDFS is the first layer and then you will be having the map reduce as a core engine for transformation for all doing etls extract transform and load so now hive is invented by facebook and the and the language which you we use here is sql so what hive is actually hive technically hive is a query engine it's not a database very important in real time in projects and in, in with your colleagues people people will always uh, call this Hive as a database, but technically speaking, that is a query engine. It's nothing wrong when you say Hive is a database, but since you are in a learning phase, you should understand this. Okay, Hive is a purely a query engine. It's not a database. So here, uh, Hive is Hive. It, it's a query engine because Hive doesn't has its own storage to store the data. Hive again uses HDFS to store the data. And that's the reason, that is also one of the reason why we are uh, saying Hive is not a DB. Whereas if you go for Oracle or MySQL, it has its own storage. Come query engine. Okay. So here, uh, uh, Facebook invented this Hive and it is an open source. It's available in Apache. You can download and install it in your machine and you can work. So the prerequisite to, uh, to get into Hive is you need to know HDFS, basic of MapReduce and SQL queries. When I say SQL queries, no complex queries like uh, stored procedure or trigger some ki that kind of SQL knowledge is not required. Create, update, delete, insert, select, subqueries and joins is wide enough for you to get into Hive. These are all the prerequisite. Now, Hive act as a vehicle, which again runs on the engine MapReduce. That's very important to understand. And that's why we call Hive as abstraction of MapReduce. We call Hive as abstraction of MapReduce. So Hive internally use MapReduce engine to process the query. So instead of Java, I'm going to communicate with SQL. So, I'm, uh, so I want to write a Java code. So just bypassing this with SQL via Hive. Okay, Hive just replaced the Java part. It's not replacing the MapReduce. That's very important. People used to say like that. Uh, people used to say, I'm, I'm not using MapReduce. I'm using Hive. No, this, you have to correct the statement. You are using uh, uh, SQL via Hive and you are not using Java. That is what you have to say. So when you say that you are not using MapReduce, then I will think then instead of uh, MapReduce, you are using some other engine to uh, run Hive. That's how I will think. So that's a wrong thing. So you are using MapReduce, but you are using SQL. Uh, instead of Java or uh, via Hive. Uh, fine. So now what Hive will do, Hive like uh, it again reads the data from HDFS and then process it in Hive with the help of MapReduce and then the output can be stored again back to HDFS. Okay. Now we understood where exactly this Hive comes into picture and what is Hive and who developed it. Okay. This is what we have seen. Now uh, like we'll, we'll get more into uh, the, the Hive internals and uh, the architecture. So before getting into that, so we have uh, similar to MapReduce, we have one more engine, right? Called Spark, right? So Spark is replacement of MapReduce. It's not replacement of the entire Hadoop. That's very important. I have saying this in many videos. I will still used to say that. So Spark just replaced the MapReduce, but not the 
whole Hadoop framework. So why I am telling this here, right? So Hive can also run on Spark Engine instead of uh, MapReduce. Okay, so uh, Hive is a vehicle. So you have MapReduce engine which uh, operates the vehicle. Now you remove MapReduce and you are changing your engine to Spark. So your same Hive vehicle will run more faster. So that is how it is. Okay. Now, so you can ask me another question. So that means uh, I, I don't want to go for Spark and MapReduce to write a code. You mean to say we can do everything in SQL itself. Okay. So you can't do everything in SQL. There will be some complex uh, uh, processing uh, transformations you have to do, which is not compatible with Hive. Then you have to go for Spark and writing programs or MapReduce to write a programs. But Hive is more matured in recent days. So you can do so many things in Hive itself, but still some things for uh, some extra performance and some extra optimization and some, some extra complex logics. If there is a key condition, then you have to go for directly to MapReduce and Spark to write in the programs instead of doing in uh, hive queries okay fine so now we get into the next level of understanding the hive internals okay fine so here uh, how hive works when there is a request response happens now imagine i installed my hive okay so whenever you install an hive there will be a server running okay now you are sending an request so the request is through cli command line interface that means in your terminal if you run bin slash hive hive will be get started like this where you can run all your queries select star from etc okay cli command line interface okay so now the 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 request what i'm sending uh, via cli is create table test okay so the request goes to my hive server so now what hive server will do so uh, when i create a table so hive has a metadata okay what what that metadata has the metadata will have all the hive table information but not the data that's very important so metadata of hive will store all the table information table information means how many columns it has whether it has an index or not in the table so those kind of information so the hive metadata is different from the metadata what maintains in the name node okay they are different okay now where this hive metadata will get stored important point this is in most asked the question in interviews also and even for your self understanding this is very important hive will store the metadata in the rdbms database only that's very important so hive will store the metadata information in and rdbms it can be oracle or it can be db2 it can be mysql or any rdbms even if you see there is an installation video of hive uh, it's there in my playlist link you can find below i have uh, shown you the installation of hive with mysql so where hive use mysql to store the metadata and very important thing hive uh, so this hive uses this rdbms to store only the metadata but not the data that you insert that is very important the data that you insert will store only in hdfs so the only reason we use rdbms here is to store the metadata information of hive very important to understand because when people used to think when they learn it in the beginning stage they think that metadata is where like hive data also will get stored no it won't if you see an oracle and mysql and all the metadata also will be get stored inside oracle inside mysql itself but in hive alone like they are uh, decoupling that metadata part the metadata will be get stored in a different uh, place that is rdbms okay now you created the table now again through cli i'm sending in another request to insert insert into table test so now i'm inserting a data or you can use a load data so load data command is to load the data in bulk as a file to a table insert means one by one so now this request comes what hive will do it will get the metadata information like this table test and how many columns it has and all those information and based on that schema information hive will store the data as a table in your hdfs okay so again the data will get stored in hdfs only okay with the with the with the, all those row column matchings with schema will happen that's how you will maintain as a metadata in rdbms but data gets stored in hdfs now i am sending a select query to read this inserted data so select star from test now what happens right so this particular query so it goes to hive server first the hive, first this query uh, first after getting this query as a request what hive will do it will first query the metadata information and then it will get the data from hdfs and then it will show you in a row so hive will show you in a row column view 
so this is what happens when you do a uh, re request uh, so create request insert request and select request this is what happened so whenever you send a request for select i will query the metadata the table information and with that the data what you have inserted it will match and it will show you as a table so this is what happens every time okay so rdbms is uh, why they are storing metadata in rdbms is a design that's how it gets stored because they don't want to uh, um, have it within the hive itself uh, they decoupled the metadata storage part outside the world of hive okay so now i'm going to tell you one more thing now imagine i'm not installing rdbms in hive i mean while installing hive you should install rdbms also so that's when you will store your metadata in a different uh, uh, database right now there is a case like imagine you don't want to install rdbms just go to apache hive site uh, and download the hive and you don't want to install rdbms just install hive only in that case how the metadata will be get stored so that is a question here so what i said to you you don't want to install rdbms just install hive only is enough so in that case where the metadata will store i will tell you that so you install hive only okay i will just go here so whenever you download hive right you installed hive so when there is no separate rdbms available in your in your installation in your mission then what hive will do hive itself will have an embedded rdbms called derby derby is an embedder it internally have have a, its own rdbms to store the metadata information of hive we call that so this will come along with your download and install itself you don't want to do anything special here so we call this as embedded embed forgive me for my spelling mistake so embedded meta store that means hive itself will have an rdbms called derby that is very important it has derby which you can't change so it itself has a database derby in which your metadata will be get stored so that you don't want to have a separate rdbms to store the metadata so we call this as embedded meta store mechanism and we call this as remote meta store remote meta store these are important for your understanding as well as this will be asked in your interview so now you will get a question in your mind so in that case why should i have to go for this remote meta store hive itself has a derby to store the metadata right it internally has its own rdbms to store the metadata then we can go ahead with this itself right in the real time in real time people will not use embedded meta store they will go for remote meta store that means they will use a separate instance to store the metadata i will tell you the difference I will tell you the drawback of embedded meta store. Now imagine you have cluster, you have four nodes. Hadoop has installed, so this is four node Hadoop cluster. Now you installed Hive in all these nodes. Okay, you download and install Hive in all these nodes, and you are not using remote meta store. You are trying to use the embedded meta store that comes with Hive itself, or DBMS that comes with Hive itself, and that means there will be a Derby database here 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 each mission will have its own derby because in each mission you are installing hive right so for every hive installation the embedded database will come along with it now imagine now you are sending and create table request and the request uh, goes to randomly to one node okay it goes to third node create test table test okay table test now what after receiving the request what this hive will do this hive will store the test so this tables metadata information in its own derby database which is an embedded one okay so now there is an another request that you are sending for insert insert into test so that request goes to uh, first node okay now after receiving this request what hive will do it will check whether this test table available in the meta store of derby in first mission's hive so this test table metadata gets stored in third mission's derby right but your insert request goes to first node means it will say table not found now you understood the problem of uh, why we are not having embedded in the real time so each node hive will have its own metadata so you can't do a, a distributed request so there should be in one place where all the metadata should store there so all these four hives should refer that and that is where we are going for remote meta store we are not going for embedded meta store so now you in in, in the same cluster you can install like one more node mysql so where you can configure so there is a configuration file in your hive where you can say like use remote meta store not embedded this is what i have showed in my hive installation video you can refer that there is a configuration file <coughs> So, uh, so in all these hive configuration file, I will say use this MySQL node, the fifth node. So now the embedded derby will remove automatically. So 
when there is a remote uh, database there it will not use the dermy now when you send a create table request to third node of hive this hive will store the metadata of test table here here the metadata will be get stored now you are sending an interest uh, sorry insert request to first hive node now now again hive will search for the test table whether present or not here so it is commonly accessed by all nodes so now test table metadata is already stored right so now your table will be successfully stored now again you can run a select query the select star from test uh, request goes to fourth node again this hive will refer this common metadata and this hive will show you the table so this is why we are not going for embedded we are going for remote so what is the use of embedded derby then so in a single node machine you are you just need to install hive just for practice purpose you can go with embedded you don't want to sit and install separately a, a rdbms to store the metadata just in a single node it's not required but it's recommended even in single node it is recommended so that you will come to know what it is actually so that is why i added the the mysql part as a remote meta store part in my hive installation video you can refer that and this is what hive architecture is all about the internals are all about so here uh, only with the cli you can connect or we have any other mode of communication to connect with hive you can do jdbc connection also okay so jdbc connection is something you write a program to connect with hive you are building a web ui to connect with hive then we need to go for jdbc so jdbc is also possible again the request response will happen in the same order the same way how i explained it to you okay so the so hive end of day hive runs with the three engines so by default hive runs on MapReduce engine there is another engine called taste and there is one more called spark so you can run hive on top of these three engines end of day your data will be get stored in a distributed file system like hdfs and even the in amazon there is a object stored called s3 that is also similar to hdfs so even hive can be used with s3 also okay so not only hdfs it can be used with s3 so if you are not aware of s3 don't worry you don't want to uh, uh, get confused for now so hdfs is a where place hive will store the data metadata will be get stored in an rdbms okay either embedded or remote rdbms that's it okay so thanks for watching data engineering as i told you already i have given complete hadoop spark hive in a category of playlist in the description box you can refer that for all the videos okay so and also like uh, uh, my instagram id and my uh, email id is given there you, if you want to contact you can contact and please do share with your uh, uh, colleagues and friends and please share my link in your linkedin uh, that will be very helpful for me and uh, yeah thanks for watching data engineering